Thanks to HAL for sponsoring this video. They're a brand new awesome Rust gambling website with games such as Jackpot, Coinflip, and a new game mode called The Wheel. For a limited time, you can get a 50% bonus when depositing with gift cards, and they have a daily free case where you can win up to $700. Make sure to use my code Tamura for a free 50 cents and check it out in the link down below. So, fertilizer's now good again. Horses are shooting out every single minute, and this means that you need to change the way that you're farming if you want to maximize your efficiency. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down how fertilizer is so viable, how much you stand to gain from using it, and how to actually use it. And a quick disclaimer, if you haven't seen my other farming guides, mainly the latest farming guide, which was posted six months ago, then you're going to be quite lost. So make sure to go check that out before you watch this video. So for those of you who stuck around, I'm going to assume that you have some basic farming knowledge and you just never used fertilizer because it wasn't viable to do so. However, with the recent changes, horses now produce one dung every 70 seconds, which turns into 10 fertilizer, which gives you around 514 fertilizer per hour. And this is obviously a lot more than you would have been getting previously. So all you need to do is keep one horse in a two by one like this, give it a trough with some food in it, and you'll be getting more than enough fertilizer. So now that you know that it's possible to get a large sum of fertilizer, I'm going to answer the question, is it actually worth it to use it? Most experienced farmers will know that it's much easier to just leave the taps running and your planter beds will fill up to 9,000 mils. This means that even if you did add fertilizer, you're going to be limited by the fact that your water is not at 100%. However, let me break the maths down to you on how much you actually stand to gain if you were to bother using this fertilizer setup. So for a standard clone of Triple G, Triple Y, it'll take you 64 minutes to harvest the berry if you're using fertilizer and 85 minutes without. Cloth, you can see that it's 70 minutes if you use fertilizer and 102 if you don't. The reason for this is because the berry's ground stat will be at 75%, so the overall stat will be at 75%. Cloth is not as strong, and the plant will actually be at 67%. If we ratio these two numbers here, we can see that berries will grow at 75% their potential capacity when you're not using fertilizer. We'd expect cloth to be around 67%, but it's actually closer to 69%, which means you'll get a 25% increase in output with berries and a 31% increase with cloth. And after you set up the pretty simple automatic sprinkler system, all you really have to do is collect dung from one horse in a two by one. So I'd say that this increase is definitely worth it now. To understand why we need the automatic watering system, let's go through the maths of the watering. So every sprinkler outputs 15 mils of water every five seconds. Using our configuration, one sprinkler hits six planter boxes, which means they'll give 2.5 mils of water per planter. The coating's done using integers, which means that 2.5 gets rounded down to two. So if we have two mils of water every five seconds, that's 24 mils of water per minute. And if we have two sprinklers in my configuration, that's 48 mils of water per minute. Every plant needs five mils of water per minute, and because there's nine in one planter box, we now need 45 mils of water per minute. So now we have the issue that we need 45 mils of water, but we're supplying 48. So using the automation, we'll make sure that the sprinklers are only running for 45 seconds out of every 48 seconds. So moving on to the actual setup, of course you're gonna need any source of power, solar panels or large wind turbines are fine. Then if you're using more than one, you just put them into a root combiner and then that root combiner feeds into whatever storage unit you wanna use, ideally a large battery. Then that goes into a chain of E branches where if you've watched my farming guides, you know that you need to branch out five power to each one of your pumps, nothing new here. However, where you can see the new red line, we're going to be branching out power over to our automatic watering setup. Now this might look a little bit confusing to some of you who haven't done much electricity, but it's actually quite simple and all you need to do to set it up is just copy out my configuration. You don't necessarily need to understand it completely, you just need to collect the components and arrange the wires in the way that I've done it here. So when you're building this, definitely pause the video here. In the setup, you can see that I'm using five E branches, two timers, one blocker and a fluid switch. To make it a little bit easier to follow, for all of the E branches, the branch out is in blue and the power out is in red. Left timer is the time that the sprinklers will be on and the right timer is the total time. So for our setup, we'd set the left timer to 45 seconds and the right timer to 48 seconds. Every branch will be set to two except for this one, which will be set to five plus however many E branches you have in the top right corner. This will make a little bit more sense when we start to scale it up and use multiple fluid switches. But for now, because we only have one E branch which goes into one fluid switch, we just set it to eight.
With my setup, one pump feeds into four sprinklers, so we take the output from the pump, put it into one fluid switch, and then daisy chain it into four sprinklers. The setup's exactly the same if you're using salt water, just remember that for every one singular chain of sprinklers, you're using one fluid switch. If your farm's a little bigger and requires more than one fluid switch, all you have to do is add two more e-branches and a fluid switch. Make sure that the branch out of these e-branches, which I represent with blue, is going into the toggle of these fluid switches. Then the power out can go to the next e-branch. Place down your second fluid switch, and again, the branch out, which is in blue, goes into the toggle. If you wanted to keep adding more, you just keep chaining these E branches and fluid switches like I'm doing here. Then, for every new fluid switch, you're going to need another E branch in order to power it. Previously, we just branched out two power into our fluid switch. However, now we're going to need to branch out that power into a chain of E branches. As you can see here, I'm using blue to branch out two power, and now because I've branched out the power into the e-branch, I can use the two outputs to go into each one of the fluid switches. It doesn't really matter which one goes into which, as they're both branching out two power anyway. Make sure that you increment this. Previously it might have been at two, but now it needs to be at four because we've got one extra. For every time you add a fluid switch, you need to increment that by two. And because up top we've now added another e-branch, you need to increment it by three. To test that this is working, we can just take our fluid output from one of our pumps and power it into the top fluid switch. Then chain that onto our four sprinklers, and right now I've got a setup of five seconds on, five seconds off. And it seems to be working fine. Keep in mind that if you're powering this circuit via an e-branch, which means you're controlling how much power the entire circuit's getting. Previously, it might have only needed 17, but for every time you increment the bottom E branch by two and the left E branch by three, you're effectively consuming five extra power, so you need to increment this by five. Also, if you're having trouble setting the timers, the timers need to be powered, but not toggled on. So come over to this wire here and clear it, then just wait for the timers to turn off and you should have no trouble setting them. Then once you're done, just make sure to place back that wire. And as for the correct timings, I did the maths for the cloth, which is 5 mils of water per 60 seconds. This is the same for pumpkins, however for berries they only need 4 mils of water, so it's actually going to be 36 out of 48. However, as I said earlier, sprinklers only splash every 5 seconds, so you want the numerator to be a multiple of 5 as to not create any issues. This ratio is the same as 3 over 4, which we can just multiply by 5 to get 15 over 20. This means that if you're farming berries, corn or potatoes, you want to use 15 over 20. And if you're using cloth or pumpkins, you want to do 45 out of 48. Remember that's the left timer for the numerator and the right timer for the denominator. Remember that the system only maintains the water level. In order to get your water level at 100%, you need to first get it to 4,500 to 6,800. Anywhere in between is fine, as long as it says 100% when you plant your plants. Then turn on the timer system and it'll maintain this water. This is just for cloth, as cloth's a little bit more picky when it comes to water. However, other plants can usually settle for anywhere in between 4,300 and 7,250. To actually use the fertilizer, one horse will produce 514 fertilizer worth of dung. And it's just like a furnace. Make sure to spread out your dung and your composter. One composter can produce 1,800 fertilizer per hour, which means that one horse with one composter will serve you for 54 planter boxes per hour, which is way more than most of you guys will ever need. Of course, if you're lazy and you just want to leave the fertilizer in, and that means you'll be wasting it on the cloning stage, then you can only use 27 planter boxes. But of course, one horse for 27 planter boxes is definitely more than enough. If you're a part of a clan and for some reason you have more than 27 planter boxes, then of course just get yourself a second horse. To use fertilizer you just have to open up the planter box and stick it in. Make sure to spread it out evenly so that you're not accidentally forgetting and running out of fertilizer in certain planter boxes instead of others. Also if you're using the watering system and fertilizer then the limiting factor is almost always going to be temperature. I highly recommend that you use heaters regardless of where you are, as even if you're in the grassy area, the temperature still drops below 100% during the daytime, and in the desert it drops drastically during the nighttime. All of this information has been tailored specifically towards using fertilizer now that it's viable again. 
All the information on my previous farming video on how to actually set up your farm and all my crossbreeding guides are still up to date and you can go watch those if you're missing out on any information as there was no point in me repeating myself here. Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you guys have enjoyed and if you have any questions or concerns feel free to leave them down in the comments and even furthermore I highly recommend that you come join my discord and ask your questions there as you'll get a much faster response from either me or the many other people who chat there. Thank you very much for watching and as always I look forward to seeing you in the next one.